Redditors who were in attendance at a wedding that was called off mid-ceremony, what was the story? Story 1. Working at a bar during my university days provided a steady stream of stories and unforgettable characters. One Saturday afternoon, two sharply dressed guys walked in, turning heads with their immaculate suits and polished shoes. They carried themselves with an air of sophistication that stood out in our usual crowd of casual patrons and college kids. I couldn't resist my curiosity and ask them what had brought them in looking so dapper. We were supposed to be at a wedding, one of them said with a shrug, his voice tinged with disappointment. But the wedding's been called off, the other chimed in, shaking his head. Absolute chaos. The explanation tumbled out of them in bits and pieces, each detail more shocking than the last. It turned out that the groom had been having an affair with the maid of honor. This wasn't just a one-time fling or a recent mistake. It had been going on for months. They had managed to keep it under wraps until the very day of the wedding. Apparently, one of the other bridesmaids had known about the affair for quite some time. She had wrestled with her conscience, debating whether or not to spill the beans. She chose the nuclear option, revealing everything on the morning of the wedding. She figured it was better to get the truth out before the vows were exchanged, rather than letting the bride walk into a sham of a marriage. So there we were, the first guy continued. Everyone dressed up, guests arriving, and then BAM! The bride's in tears, the groom's trying to explain himself, the maid of honor is nowhere to be found, and the whole thing just collapses. His friend shook his head again, still incredulous. I mean, can you imagine? Months of planning, thousands of dollars, all down the drain because some people couldn't keep their pants on. As they spoke, I couldn't help but visualize the scene. The beautifully decorated venue, the guests in their finest attire, the bride in her stunning gown, everything set for a perfect day. Then the bombshell drops, shattering the idyllic picture into a million pieces. It was the kind of drama you see in movies or read about in tabloids, but here it was, happening to real people. The guys ordered a couple of stiff drinks, trying to wash away the shock of the morning's events. We chatted a bit more, and they told me they were close friends of the groom. They had been looking forward to the wedding, not just because of the celebration, but because they genuinely believed their friend was marrying the love of his life. It's just so messed up, one of them said, staring into his glass. I mean, we all knew the bride and groom had their ups and downs, but who doesn't? We never saw this coming. It's like we don't even know him anymore, the other guy nodded. And the poor bride. She's devastated. I can't even begin to imagine what she's going through right now. Story 2. In sixth grade, one of the most memorable events wasn't a class trip or a school play, but something far more personal and unexpected. Our teacher, Miss Roberts, was getting married, and she had invited the entire class to her wedding. It was the second or third week of June, and we were all thrilled to attend such a special occasion. We got dressed up in our best clothes, excited to see our beloved teacher walk down the aisle. The ceremony was held in a beautiful old church the kind with high vaulted ceilings and stained glass windows that cast colorful light on the pews. We sat near the front, whispering among ourselves, our excitement barely contained. When the music started and Miss Roberts appeared at the back of the church with her father, she looked absolutely radiant. Her smile was infectious, and you could feel the joy in the air as she began her walk down the aisle. About three quarters of the way down, something strange happened. The groom, who had been standing at the altar waiting, suddenly stepped to the side. At first, it seemed like a minor distraction. Maybe he needed a moment to collect himself. But as Miss Roberts and her father continued to walk, oblivious to what was happening, a murmur spread through the crowd. For a solid minute, there was utter confusion. Was this a case of last-minute cold feet? A sudden emergency? People exchanged worried glances, whispering theories. Then, the reality sank in. The groom was bailing on the wedding. Miss Roberts's smile faded as she finally noticed the commotion. Her father stopped, looking bewildered and concerned. The atmosphere in the church shifted dramatically. What had been a joyous occasion turned into a surreal and heartbreaking scene. Miss Roberts was quickly whisked out of the church by her family and close friends, leaving us all sitting there in stunned silence. An official came forward and announced that the wedding was canceled, and we were all asked to leave quietly. Walking out of the church, the mood among my classmates and I was somber. We had never seen an adult, especially one we admired so much, go through something so devastating. The ride back to school was quiet, each of us lost in our thoughts, processing what we had just witnessed. Miss Roberts didn't return to school for the last week of classes. We had a substitute teacher, and although they tried to carry on as usual, the absence of Miss Roberts was palpable. We were worried about her, hoping she was okay, but we didn't know what to say or do. It was an ugly situation, one that left a mark on all of us. Story 3. One wedding I attended was more dramatic than any soap opera. It was a sunny Saturday afternoon, and the ceremony was set in a beautiful garden, flowers in full bloom, 
with friends and family gathered to celebrate the union of Jake and Sarah. The atmosphere was festive, filled with laughter, clinking glasses, and heartfelt toasts. I had known Jake from work for a few years. He was a decent guy, always friendly and hardworking. Sarah was the love of his life, and they seemed perfect together. Their relationship was the kind that made you believe in happily ever after. As guests, we were all excited to witness this next step in their journey. Everything was going smoothly until it was time for the bride to walk down the aisle. The music started playing, and everyone turned to look at Sarah, who looked stunning in her wedding gown. But just before she took her first step, something unexpected happened. A co-worker of Jake's, who had clearly been hitting the open bar hard, stood up. Her name was Lisa, and she was known for her wild antics at office parties. But no one could have anticipated what she did next. In a loud, slurred voice, she announced, I've been sleeping with Jake for the past six months. You could hear a pin drop. The shock was palpable, spreading through the guests like wildfire. All eyes darted between Lisa, the stunned groom, and the bride, who had frozen in her tracks, her face a mixture of confusion and horror. For a moment, it was as if time stood still. Then chaos erupted. Sarah's father, a burly man with a short temper, started shouting at Jake, demanding answers. Sarah's mother tried to calm him down while Sarah herself stood there, tears welling up in her eyes. Jake's friends and family were in an uproar, some trying to console Sarah, others angrily confronting Jake. Lisa, realizing the gravity of what she'd done, stumbled and fell back into her seat, sobbing uncontrollably. Jake tried to speak, but his words were lost in the cacophony. It was clear that there was no salvaging the situation. Sarah's bridesmaids rushed to her side, ushering her away from the scene. The ceremony was abruptly halted, and guests began to leave, whispering among themselves about the scandal. I watched as Jake was pulled aside by his best man, who tried to talk some sense into him. But the damage was done. The dream wedding had turned into a nightmare in a matter of seconds. I couldn't believe what I had just witnessed. It was the kind of drama you read about in tabloids, not something that happens to people you know. Story 4 I've shared this story before, but it never fails to astonish people. It wasn't my own wedding, but rather my father's first wedding, which took place in Colombia in the mid-1960s. The tale is one of unexpected tragedy and the somber resilience that followed. My father and his best friend were marrying sisters, who also happened to be my father's first cousins, a common practice in some families back then. The wedding was a significant event, essentially a large family reunion since it involved the same extended family on both sides. The atmosphere was festive, with relatives arriving from near and far, catching up and sharing stories. On the morning of the wedding, as everyone was busy getting dressed and preparing for the ceremony, a young relative of my father's, who was serving in the Colombian military at the time, took it upon himself to entertain the family's children. His choice of entertainment, though, was bizarre and tragically ill-conceived. He had a collection of deactivated hand grenades and was apparently trying to drive nails through them to mount them onto a piece of wood. The exact details are hazy, but the consensus was that he thought they were safe. In a horrifying twist, one of the grenades was not deactivated. It was, in fact, a live grenade. The young man unknowingly triggered it, and it exploded with devastating consequences. The blast instantly killed him and several of the children who had been gathered around, eager to see what he was doing. The joyous preparations for the wedding came to a screeching halt as the family was thrown into chaos and grief. The shock of losing a young man and multiple children in such a gruesome manner was indescribable. The house, once filled with laughter and excitement, was now enveloped in mourning. In the wake of the tragedy, the wedding was not canceled but postponed. A few days later, a subdued and somber ceremony was held. Gone were the grand celebrations and the jubilant atmosphere. Instead, it was a quiet affair, marked by the heavy hearts of those who attended. My father and his bride exchanged vows, not in the exuberance of celebration, but in the reflective silence of shared sorrow and endurance. Story 5 One summer, I went to my cousin's wedding in Little Rock, Arkansas. It was supposed to be a beautiful day filled with joy and celebration, but instead, it turned into a surreal and panic-stricken event that no one would ever forget. The church was packed with about 300 guests, all dressed to the nines and ready to witness my cousin Emily tie the knot with her fiancé, Dave. The ceremony started off smoothly, with the organ playing a soft melody and the bridal party making their way down the aisle. Emily looked stunning in her white gown, and Dave stood at the altar, beaming with happiness. As the priest began the ceremony, he seemed perfectly fine, delivering his words with the calm authority you'd expect. But then, suddenly, he started coughing. At first, it was just a slight occasional cough, nothing that raised much alarm. However, within minutes, his coughing became uncontrollable. His face turned red and he clutched his throat, gasping for breath. The congregation watched in horror as he staggered, trying to continue the ceremony, but it was clear he was in serious trouble. Before anyone could react, the priest collapsed onto the altar, causing a collective gasp from the audience. 
Panic spread through the church like wildfire. Some guests rushed to help, while others stood frozen in shock. Emily and Dave looked on in disbelief, their perfect day unraveling before their eyes. An ambulance was called, and paramedics arrived quickly to tend to the priest. He was stabilized and rushed to the hospital, leaving the wedding in a state of disarray. The guests were left murmuring among themselves, trying to make sense of what had just happened. The real shock came when the paramedics informed us that the priest had viral meningitis, a highly contagious infection. The announcement sent a wave of fear through the crowd. Viral meningitis is serious, and the fact that we had all been in close proximity to the infected priest meant that every single person in the church was at risk. The wedding ceremony was put on indefinite pause, and the focus shifted from celebrating a union to addressing a potential health crisis. Instructions were given, and the entire congregation, nearly 300 people, had to go to the hospital immediately for testing and prophylactic treatments. It was a logistical nightmare. Buses were arranged to transport everyone, and the scene at the hospital was chaotic, with people lining up anxious and uncertain. Hours passed in a blur as medical staff worked tirelessly to test everyone and administer treatments. We were told to monitor ourselves for symptoms and to avoid contact with others until we were cleared. It was a stark reminder of how quickly life can turn upside down. Story 6 when I was a kid, maybe seven or eight years old, I attended a wedding that left me utterly confused for years. It was my first time going to such a big fancy event, and I was excited to be a part of it. The bride was a family friend, and the whole thing was set up to be a beautiful celebration in a grand old church with colorful flowers and elegant decorations everywhere. The air was filled with the buzz of guests chattering and the sound of a string quartet playing softly in the background. The ceremony was supposed to start at two o'clock sharp. Everyone was seated waiting with bated breath for the moment the bride would walk down the aisle. The groom was already up front, looking a bit nervous but mostly excited, standing next to his best man. The bridesmaids were lined up, whispering and giggling, holding their bouquets tightly. But as the minutes ticked by, it became clear something was wrong. The murmurs in the crowd grew louder as people glanced at their watches and phones. An hour passed, and the bride was still nowhere to be seen. The whispers turned into concerned conversations, and a sense of unease spread through the room. Finally, a friend of the bride's family stood up and addressed the congregation, trying to maintain a calm demeanor. Ladies and gentlemen, we regret to inform you that the wedding has been postponed. The bride is experiencing cold feet. I remember sitting there, utterly bewildered. Cold feet? It was the middle of summer. How could her feet possibly be cold enough to cancel a wedding? My young mind was racing with confusion. Did she forget to wear shoes? Did she step in a puddle? None of it made sense to me, and no one bothered to explain it right then and there. Everyone began to leave the church, some with expressions of sympathy, others shaking their heads in disbelief. The groom looked devastated, standing there like a lost puppy. His best man patted him on the back, trying to offer some comfort. My parents guided me outside, and I kept asking them why the bride didn't show up just because her feet were cold. They exchanged a glance, and my dad finally said, It's a figure of speech, kiddo. She got scared. That explanation didn't make much sense to me either. How could getting scared have anything to do with cold feet? It wasn't until years later, when I was much older, that I finally understood what cold feet really meant. It's an American saying, a metaphor for getting nervous and backing out of something at the last minute. Story 7. My wedding was nearly called off because my husband's grandfather was on his deathbed. We were torn between the joy of our upcoming union and the sorrow of potentially losing a beloved family member. Despite our uncertainty, everyone insisted we proceed with the wedding, arguing that his grandfather would have wanted us to go through with it. The day arrived, a blend of excitement and a somber undertone that hung heavily in the air. As I walked down the aisle, I couldn't help but notice the strained smiles and distant looks among our guests. It was as if everyone was trying to put on a brave face for our sake, masking the grief that was bubbling just beneath the surface. We said our vows, exchanged rings, and sealed our promises with a kiss. It was a moment of pure joy, but the elation was short-lived. Unbeknownst to us, my husband's grandfather passed away almost simultaneously as we said, I do. My father-in-law received the call from the hospital shortly after we left the church, confirming the sad news. The family decided to keep the news from us for the time being, hoping to preserve the happiness of our day. As the reception began, the mood was noticeably subdued. The festive atmosphere we had envisioned was replaced with a sense of quiet melancholy. Guests mingled and offered polite conversation, but the energy was lacking. When we asked why no one was dancing or celebrating, they brushed it off, saying, It's nothing! I remember looking around the room, feeling a growing sense of confusion and unease. The music played softly in the background, the decorations were beautiful, and the food was delicious. But there was an undeniable void. It was supposed to be a celebration of love, 
but it felt like something was fundamentally missing. The next morning, the truth came crashing down on us. We received condolences alongside congratulations as we prepared for his funeral. The juxtaposition of these two events was surreal and heart-wrenching. We were overwhelmed with grief, not just for the loss of his grandfather, but also for the wedding day that was overshadowed by sorrow. It's been four months since that day, and I still find myself on the verge of tears when I think about it. We had imagined our wedding day to be filled with unbridled joy and celebration, a memory we would cherish forever. Instead, it became a day marked by a poignant mixture of love and loss. Story 8. I should start off by saying that I'm part of a culture where a wedding will never start on time. So showing up on time usually means you're early. That's just how it is. We're used to it. So when my cousin's wedding ran late, no one was surprised at first. After about 30, 45 minutes of waiting, the older ladies from her church and my aunties started whispering among themselves. The conversations got louder, and I started picking up bits and pieces of the gossip. Turns out, this was the second attempt for my cousin to get married to her fiancé. The first time they tried, he got into a bar fight the night before the wedding, and it was called off. As the waiting stretched into an hour and a half, the buzz of conversation grew louder. Finally, a member of the wedding party came out and told everyone to move to the reception hall because they were about to lose the church. I didn't think much of it. There was food and drink at the reception, so we all just headed over there. The reception started with the usual festivities. My cousin did it all. The first dance, a dance with her dad, the cake cutting, and tossing the bouquet. But something was noticeably off. Her groom was nowhere to be seen. At first, it seemed like maybe he was just running late or there was some mix-up. But as the night went on, it became clear he wasn't going to show up. No one really knew what to do. We couldn't give speeches because the groom wasn't there. And it felt awkward to celebrate a wedding that, for the second time, wasn't happening. The tension was thick and everyone was on edge, unsure of what was coming next. Finally, my cousin took the microphone for a toast. She looked around the room, took a deep breath, and began speaking. Maybe I'm just not meant to be married, she said. She explained how she had tried twice to marry this guy, and each time something had gone wrong. Her voice wavered as she spoke, but she pushed through, determined to be heard. Then she dropped the bombshell. Do y'all know where this man is? Do you know where this mother f is? She paused, letting the question hang in the air. He's in jail. Yes, jail. Because his dumb friends let him drive home from the bachelor party, and he got a DUI. So, while we've been here, he's been sitting in a cell, and we've been trying to get him out. The room fell into stunned silence. The reality of the situation hit everyone hard. There was no third attempt at a wedding. No Prince Charming coming to rescue her. My cousin's fiancé had messed up big time, and she was left to pick up the pieces in front of all her family and friends. That night was a harsh lesson in resilience and the unpredictability of life. My cousin, standing there in her wedding dress, had to face the reality that her dreams of a perfect wedding were shattered. Not just once, but twice. It was a raw and real moment that left everyone in shock. Story 10. I've got a story that still makes me chuckle and cringe a bit every time I think about it. It was during my wife's friend's wedding, a beautiful ceremony that was going off without a hitch. The vows were heartfelt, the guests were teary-eyed, and the couple looked stunningly happy. Everything seemed perfect. After they were declared husband and wife, the newlyweds started taking their official photos. As everyone milled around, congratulating the couple and chatting, I decided to get a few good shots myself. I'm not a professional photographer or anything, but I like to think I can capture a decent picture. In my quest for the perfect angle, I leaned against a wall to steady myself and get a better view. That's when it happened. Unbeknownst to me, the wall I chose to lean on housed the light switches for the entire hall. As I pressed my weight against it, I felt an unexpected click. Suddenly, every single light in the hall went out. Complete darkness enveloped the room. People gasped, murmuring in confusion, and there was a flurry of movement as guests tried to figure out what had happened. My heart dropped into my stomach. I knew instantly that I was the culprit, but I also knew I had to play it cool. Amidst the confusion, I discreetly fumbled around for the switches, trying to turn the lights back on. I was praying no one had noticed it was me who had caused the blackout, but for some reason the lights refused to come back on. I must have flipped every switch multiple times, but the hall remained in darkness. Eventually, someone found the circuit breaker and managed to restore the lights. But by then, the damage was done. The photographers had kept snapping photos during the blackout, and the resulting images were, let's just say they were unique. The couple's wedding album ended up with a mix of beautifully lit photos and some that were dramatically shadowed and dim. The dark photos had an edgy, almost artistic feel to them, which, in hindsight, added a unique twist to their collection. Story 11 my best friend's wedding was an event none of us will ever forget, but for all the wrong reasons. As the master of ceremonies, I had a front row seat to the entire spectacle. His brother was the best man, and we were both deeply involved in making sure everything went off without a hitch, or so we thought. 
I arrived at the venue about two hours before the ceremony was set to start. It was a picturesque wine farm, with the church and reception hall right next to each other, surrounded by lush vineyards. I was chatting with the DJ, checking the microphones and speakers, making sure everything was ready for the big day. Every so often, I noticed waiters carrying trays of wine, beer, and shooters from the bar. I didn't think much of it at the time. After all, it was a wedding, and people were expected to drink. As the time for the ceremony approached, guests started arriving and mingling outside the reception hall, enjoying snacks and drinks in the warm sun. The bride, who was getting ready in a guest house on the property, was delayed for quite a while, which struck me as odd given the proximity. But eventually we got the go-ahead that she was on her way, conveyed in a golf cart. I was positioned at the entrance of the church, ready to close the doors after the bride entered. As she dismounted the cart and began walking with her father toward the church steps, she tripped and face-planted right there on the dirt path. Her beautiful white dress was instantly soiled. I rushed to help her up, thinking she just had a clumsy moment. She dusted herself off, insisted she was fine, and continued on her way into the church. But as she walked down the aisle, it became clear something was very wrong. She was wobbling, stopping to greet guests, making jokes, pulling faces, and giving thumbs-ups. My suspicions were confirmed. She was completely shit-faced. The groom's jaw dropped as she approached, swaying and slurring her words. Despite the groom's attempts to pause the ceremony, the bride insisted everything proceed as planned. Her insistence quickly escalated into a loud argument right there at the altar. She accused him of ruining her wedding day before storming out of the church, tripping over a bench and falling again. It was painfully awkward for everyone. In the confusion, we directed the guests to the reception hall to cool off with some drinks while we figured out what to do next. It turned out that the bride had been drinking heavily all morning. I checked with the bar and discovered she and two friends had consumed three bottles of wine, six beers, six ciders, and a ridiculous number of shooters. The bride was now in the guest house, crying and throwing tantrums loud enough for everyone to hear. She continued drinking from the leftover booze. The groom came out to apologize and announced that the wedding was officially called off, but encouraged everyone to stay and enjoy the food and drinks since it was all paid for. Most of the bride's side left, while the rest of us tried to make the best of the situation. About an hour later, the bride emerged, even drunker, and screamed at the groom again before storming off with her friends. They left in a car, leaving us to finish the night quietly. I drove home with the groom and his family, only to find the bride at a bar near their complex, still in her wedding dress, makeup smeared, and drinking beers. The groom called her father, who came to take her home. They tried counseling after that, but it didn't work out. Her drinking problem was worse than any of us realized. They broke up not long after. The entire episode was recorded by our friend, the wedding photographer videographer. There's still a copy of this fiasco somewhere. Maybe one day we'll look back and laugh. But for now, it's just a painful memory of a day that was supposed to be beautiful, but turned into a complete disaster. Story 12. I wasn't personally at this wedding, but one of my older brothers was, and he told me a story that stayed with me ever since. It was a small town wedding, the kind where everyone knows everyone, and the whole community comes together to celebrate. The bride and groom were well-liked in their town, and the excitement was palpable as the big day approached. On the morning of the wedding, everything seemed to be going smoothly. Guests were arriving. The church was beautifully decorated, and the bride was getting ready, surrounded by her bridesmaids and family. The groom called ahead to let them know he was on his way, and everyone was in high spirits, eagerly anticipating his arrival. But as the minutes turned into hours, concern started to creep in. The groom hadn't shown up, and no one could reach him on his phone. The guests waited, initially assuming he might be running late due to some last-minute hiccup. As time dragged on, though, the worry grew. The bride was trying to stay calm, but you could see the fear and confusion in her eyes. The wedding was eventually called off for the day, and a frantic search began. Friends and family spread out, driving along the roads he might have taken, checking in with anyone who might have seen him. It was as if he had vanished into thin air. The entire town was on edge, whispering about what could have happened. Days turned into weeks with no sign of him. The bride was heartbroken, and the town was consumed with speculation and worry. It wasn't until a month later that the grim truth came to light. A farmer, while tending to his fields, noticed something unusual at the bottom of a slough, a partially submerged car. When authorities investigated, they discovered the groom's partially decomposed body inside. The theory was that on his way to the church, he had slid off a gravel road and into the slough. The car had become hidden from view, partially submerged in the murky water, and he had tragically never made it out. It was a heartbreaking end to what was supposed to be a joyous day. The discovery brought a somber closure to the mystery, but left a lasting impact on everyone involved. The bride was devastated, as were the families and the entire community. 
They held a memorial service for him, and the church that was meant to witness a wedding instead became a place of mourning. Story 13. My brother-in-law's wedding was a day teetering on the edge of chaos, all thanks to some deep family drama. It all started when the bride-to-be refused to sign a prenup, setting off alarm bells for my mother-in-law, who was fiercely protective of her sons and their assets. The ceremony was set to take place in a beautiful old church, decorated with flowers and filled with friends and family. Everyone was dressed to the nines, and despite the undercurrents of tension, it was shaping up to be a picture-perfect day. But my mother-in-law was on edge. She had spent weeks trying to convince the bride to sign the prenup, and the refusal only made her more suspicious of the bride's intentions. By the time the wedding day arrived, she was a bundle of nerves, ready to explode. The ceremony began, and everything was going smoothly. The bride looked stunning, and my brother-in-law couldn't have looked happier. But then came the moment when the officiant asked if anyone had any objections to the union. There was a tense pause, and I could see my mother-in-law's face turning red, her hands gripping the pew in front of her. She started to rise from her seat, her mouth opening to voice her objection. Just then, my aunt-in-law, who had been keeping a close eye on her, sprang into action. In a move that would have made a football player proud, she practically tackled my mother-in-law, pinning her back into her seat and whispering furiously in her ear. The bride and groom, oblivious to the near disaster, continued with their vows. After that dramatic near miss, they managed to get through the rest of the ceremony without any further incidents. They walked down the aisle as husband and wife, with a mix of joy and relief on their faces. But the drama was far from over. Over the years, their marriage has been a roller coaster of epic proportions. There have been three arrests, mainly stemming from the bride's unpredictable behavior, a stalking incident that left everyone on edge, and multiple trips to rehab for the bride, who struggled with substance abuse issues. Despite all this, they have managed to stay together. It's been a turbulent journey, with ups and downs that would test the strongest of relationships. My mother-in-law, while still wary, has grudgingly accepted the situation. She and the bride have a complicated relationship, to say the least. The family gatherings are never dull. The bride's presence adds an element of unpredictability that keeps everyone on their toes. There are times when her behavior is erratic, leading to whispered conversations and concerned glances. Other times, she is the life of the party, charming everyone with her wit and charisma. Through it all, my brother-in-law remains steadfast. His commitment to his wife is unwavering, despite the many challenges they've faced. It's clear that he loves her deeply, and he's determined to stand by her no matter what. Story 14 One of the most unforgettable weddings I ever attended was a destination wedding in Mexico. The picturesque beach, the azure waves, and the vibrant sunset were all set to provide the perfect backdrop for the union of two people in love. Guests had flown in from all over, ready to celebrate and indulge in the beauty of the occasion. Everything was going smoothly at first. The decorations were in place, the guests were seated, and the bride was radiant with excitement. However, as the ceremony time approached, a noticeable tension started to build. The groom was nowhere to be found. The minutes ticked by, and whispers began to ripple through the crowd. The bride, although trying to remain composed, was visibly worried. Then a peculiar thing happened. The groomsmen began moving through the crowd, discreetly but urgently asking people for money. The confusion was palpable. It turns out the groom was in jail. He had mailed a package of candy from his home in the U.S. to the hotel in Mexico, where the wedding was taking place. Somehow, this act had landed him in a Mexican jail on charges related to mailing prohibited items across the border. The groomsmen explained the situation to the bewildered guests, and a frantic collection effort began. They needed several thousand dollars in cash to secure his release. Guests, though shocked, started pooling their money together, determined to salvage the wedding. It was a bizarre sight, as people handed over cash in an effort to free the groom from his predicament. Miraculously, the money was gathered, and the groomsmen rushed off to pay the bail. Hours passed, and as the sun began to dip below the horizon, the groom was finally released. However, instead of returning to the wedding, he made a beeline for the airport and flew back to the U.S., thinking he could escape the mess entirely. Just as we thought the chaos was over, there was yet another twist. While the bride and the remaining guests tried to make the best of the situation, police officers showed up at the hotel. It turns out that the groom had violated international shipping laws by mailing candy, which was classified under restricted items, into another country. This added a layer of international legal trouble on top of everything else. The bride was devastated. Her dream wedding had turned into an international incident. Guests were left stunned and unsure of how to proceed. The reception, which was supposed to be a joyful celebration, turned into a somber gathering of people trying to process what had just happened. Story 15. It was a wedding day that started off as normal as any other, but ended in the most unsettling and shocking way imagined. The bride, dressed in a beautiful gown and wearing a veil, 
was waiting for her father to escort her down the aisle. The guests were seated, the groom was at the altar, and everything seemed perfect. But when her father arrived and she lifted her veil, everything changed. She was in tears, and without warning, she slapped her father hard across the face and shouted at him, something that roughly translated to, How could you do this to me, you illegitimate child? She then stormed out of the venue, still in her wedding dress, leaving everyone in stunned silence. The groom was confused and heartbroken, as were the guests, who were too shocked to follow her or even react properly. She took a cab home and then disappeared. There was no note, no explanation. The groom was devastated, left standing alone at the altar. Her parents, in shock and disgrace, soon divorced. It was an inexplicable tragedy that left everyone reeling until the truth started to come out. Eventually, the bride's mother broke down and revealed the grim truth. The groom was actually her ex-husband's illegitimate son. The night before the wedding, the groom's mother had confessed this to the bride's mother, who in turn told her daughter. The revelation was a bombshell, revealing a dark history of abuse by the bride's father, not only towards her, but also towards the groom's mother and several other young women in the family. As the bride was trying to process this horrifying information, her father, who had a long history of such abuse, got drunk and took off in his car. He ended up crashing it, not only ending his own life, but also taking the lives of an innocent couple in the other car. The revelations were almost too much to bear. The bride had fled in utter horror and despair, and the entire family was shattered. For years, no one had suspected a thing about the father's dark past. He had hidden his abusive actions well, presenting a facade of a loving and respectable family man. The community was shocked to its core as the true extent of his actions came to light. The wedding was supposed to be a day of joy and union, but it turned into a nightmare that uncovered years of hidden trauma and abuse. The groom, who had lost not only his bride but also his father in a single day, was left to grapple with the devastating reality of his parentage and the horrific actions of his biological father. As for the bride, she eventually resurfaced, but the scars of that day and the revelations that came with it were deep and lasting. Her family's disintegration, her father's death, and the uncovering of such dark secrets left a mark that would never fully heal. Story 16. Hello, Reddit. My time to shine. Let me take you back to a summer in my mid-twenties, a time known infamously as the summer of weddings. You know the one. All those college sweethearts who had found jobs or finished grad school were getting hitched, and wedding season was in full swing. I knew the groom from college. We weren't best friends, but we were good acquaintances, having shared many classes in our business program. Good enough to score an invite to his wedding. The bride, on the other hand, was a mystery to me, a hometown girlfriend who went to a different college. Despite the long distance, their relationship had endured. From what I'd heard, she was a nice enough girl. So here we are at the wedding. The ceremony was as picturesque as you'd imagine. The bride looked stunning. The groom was beaming, and the atmosphere was filled with that palpable wedding day joy. The couple stood at the altar, surrounded by their wedding party as the preacher began his homily. Out of nowhere, from the back of the church, came a commotion. A one-legged man on crutches hobbled down the aisle, yelling, You can't keep me away! I promised I would be here! The groom turned to see what the ruckus was about, only to be greeted with a crutch to the head. The groom dropped like a stone. Chaos ensued. It felt like everyone at the front of the church jumped the one-legged guy. The groomsmen, both sets of parents, and even a few enthusiastic guests leapt into action, dragging him out of the church. The rest of us sat there in stunned silence until the preacher announced that, Due to these unforeseen events, the wedding has been postponed. Well, no kidding. Even Gene Dixon couldn't have predicted that kind of insanity. A few weeks later, the rest of the story came to light, as Paul Harvey would say. Turns out, the bride's parents had a pretty ugly divorce when she was young. Her mom remarried a stand-up guy who became a much better father figure than her biological dad, who had been mostly absent. The bride wanted her stepdad to walk her down the aisle, which didn't sit well with her biological father. The bio dad had lost a leg to poorly managed diabetes and his fondness for whiskey. Despite being told he could attend as a guest, he wasn't part of the wedding party. The night before the wedding, the bride's sister, who was also a bridesmaid, visited their bio dad to make sure there wouldn't be any trouble. But dear old dad was halfway through a bottle and ranting about how he was going to be part of his daughter's wedding no matter what. In a moment of poor judgment, the sister decided the best way to prevent trouble was to steal his artificial leg while he was passed out drunk, thinking it would keep him homebound until after the wedding. It seemed like a good idea at the time. Hindsight is 20 20ths and all that. Obviously, it didn't go as planned. After that fiasco, the couple eventually got married in a small private ceremony several months later. Last I heard... They were still together, and their oldest child started college last fall. Story 17. I've shared this story before, but it's one of those wild tales that you can't forget. I used to work at a wedding venue, and in my time there, 
I witnessed some truly unbelievable events. Two instances in particular stand out, both involving an incredible amount of chaos. The first incident involved a DJ and a particularly drunk guest. The wedding had been going smoothly until this guy, completely hammered, decided it was a good idea to bite the DJ. You read that right? He bit him. It was surreal. The music stopped, the DJ was understandably furious, and the drunken guest was escorted out. The rest of the evening was tense, but nothing compared to what happened at another wedding I worked. The second incident was like something out of a bar fight in a Western movie. It started out as a beautiful ceremony with everything going according to plan. The bride and groom were happy, the guests were enjoying themselves, and the atmosphere was filled with love and laughter. But then things took a drastic turn. During the reception, tension started bubbling up among a few guests. The best man, who had clearly had too much to drink, got into a heated argument with the mother of the bride. In an unbelievable moment, he actually kicked her in the chest. She went down and all hell broke loose. Guests were shouting, people were pushing and shoving, and it quickly escalated into a full-blown brawl. It felt like a scene from an old western. Fists flying, tables overturning, and sheer pandemonium. I found myself in the middle of the chaos, trying to help where I could. At one point, the stepfather of the bride picked up a chair and was aiming to hit the bride. I had to intervene, wrestling the chair away from him before he could do any harm. It was absolute madness. Fights were breaking out all over the place, and security was called in to help get things under control. Guests were being dragged outside, and we were doing our best to calm the situation. The police eventually arrived to break up the brawl and restore some semblance of order. Story 18 I once heard a story about a wedding that took an unbelievably dramatic turn. It was one of those tales that leaves you shaking your head in disbelief at how some people can turn a joyous occasion into a complete disaster. The ceremony had started beautifully. The bride looked stunning in her gown, and the groom seemed ready to take the plunge into married life. The venue was filled with friends and family, all gathered to witness the couple exchange their vows. The atmosphere was perfect until it wasn't. Just as the officiant was about to read out the vows, the doors of the church burst open. In walked the groom's side piece, striding confidently down the aisle. The entire congregation turned in their seats, gasping in shock. The bride's face went from glowing with happiness to a mask of confusion and fear. The side piece made her way to the front and, without hesitation, started talking to the groom. Whatever she said must have been persuasive or previously planned because, incredibly, the groom walked away from the altar, leaving his bride standing there in disbelief. He took the side piece by the hand and left the church, abandoning his bride in front of everyone. The scene that followed was heartbreaking. The bride, left in tears, was consoled by her family and the priest. The wedding guests were stunned, murmuring amongst themselves and trying to process what had just happened. It was a complete and utter catastrophe. Life has a funny way of turning things around, though. Despite the crushing blow, the bride managed to move on from the debacle. She found love again and is now happily married to someone who truly values her. Her new husband treats her with the love and respect she deserves, and they have built a beautiful life together. As for the groom, karma seemed to catch up with him. The side piece who had stolen him away turned out to be far less committed than he had imagined. She ended up cheating on him. And if that wasn't bad enough, she also squandered a significant amount of his money. The once smug groom was left betrayed and financially drained, a far cry from the life he thought he would have. Story 19 When I was in high school, I worked at a mom-and-pop bakery that specialized in wedding cakes and desserts. It was a small place with a big heart, and we catered to several wedding venues. My job often involved delivering these beautiful confections, mostly on Saturday mornings. One particular Saturday, however, turned out to be quite memorable. We had prepared a stunning three-tier wedding cake along with a variety of other desserts for a wedding at a popular venue. My colleague and I carefully loaded everything into the van and made our way to the reception site, excited to see our creations displayed at yet another happy celebration. When we arrived at the venue, we were greeted by the staff who wore unusually somber expressions. They informed us that the wedding had been called off the night before. Apparently, the groom had been caught cheating on the bride-to-be, and the whole event was canceled in a flurry of heartbreak and anger. Standing there with the wedding cake and desserts, we didn't know what to do next. The venue staff, however, had a plan. Since all the food was already paid for and prepared, they decided to donate it to a local shelter. It was a thoughtful gesture that ensured the food wouldn't go to waste and would bring some joy to those in need. We got the address of the shelter and loaded the cake and desserts back into the van. Following us were the venue's trucks, filled with the main entrees and appetizers. The drive to the shelter was a mix of emotions. Sadness for the bride whose dreams had been shattered, and a strange sense of fulfillment knowing the food would be appreciated by those less fortunate. When we arrived at the shelter, the staff there were overjoyed. They couldn't believe their luck. The wedding cake, which had been crafted with such care and attention to detail, 
became the centerpiece of a very different kind of celebration. The other desserts, along with the main courses and appetizers, were a huge hit. Seeing the smiles on the faces of the shelter's residents as they enjoyed the feast was heartwarming. It was a silver lining to what had been a dark cloud for the would-be bride and her family. The experience taught me a lot about resilience and the importance of finding light even in the darkest of situations. The bride, though devastated initially, eventually moved on. From what I heard later through mutual acquaintances, she found someone who truly valued and respected her. As for the groom, his actions were a lesson in how quickly life can turn upside down due to poor choices. Story 20. It wasn't mid-ceremony, but I was at the reception for a co-worker's wedding when everything went south in the most spectacular fashion. The day had started off well enough. The ceremony was beautiful, the vows were heartfelt, and the couple seemed genuinely happy. The reception was held in a charming venue, filled with friends, family, and co-workers, all there to celebrate the newlyweds. As the night wore on, the drinks flowed freely, and the atmosphere grew increasingly rowdy. My co-worker, the groom, had a bit too much to drink. I noticed him getting progressively drunk, but at the time, it just seemed like he was letting loose and having a good time. Then, things took a dramatic turn. At some point during the festivities, the groom disappeared into one of the bathrooms with another woman. It wasn't long before people started noticing their absence. Curiosity and concern led a few guests to check on him, and that's when the scandalous discovery was made. The groom was caught in the act, receiving oral sex from this other woman. The scene that followed was pure chaos. Word spread quickly and the bride, horrified and humiliated, saw the aftermath for herself. She was devastated and understandably so. There was no hiding it, no smoothing it over. The reception came to a screeching halt and what had been a joyous occasion turned into an unmitigated disaster. The fallout was immediate and severe. The bride left in tears, supported by her family and friends. The groom, now sobering up, realized the gravity of what he had done. The marriage didn't survive the night, leading to a swift and bitter divorce. The groom found himself at rock bottom, his reputation in tatters and his personal life in shambles. For a while, he seemed to be going nowhere fast. He was stuck in a cycle of regret and self-destruction, unable to move past the mess he had made. But life has a way of offering second chances, and he eventually decided to turn his life around. He began to make significant changes, starting with his health and fitness. The once overweight, drunken mess of a man became dedicated to improving himself. He started running first just around his neighborhood, then entering local races. Over time, he worked his way up to marathons and even mud runs. His transformation was nothing short of incredible. He shed the pounds, built muscle, and found a new passion for fitness and endurance sports. In the midst of this personal overhaul, he met someone new. They connected on a level he hadn't known was possible. She was beautiful, inside and out, and supported his new lifestyle. They fell in love, and he proposed, this time determined not to repeat the mistakes of his past. They married in a quiet, intimate ceremony, surrounded by a close-knit group of friends and family who had watched his transformation with admiration. Story 21. I wasn't in attendance, but I stumbled upon a fascinating piece of family history while snooping around as a kid. I found some old divorce papers from 1962 between my dad and a woman named Karen. This was long before he met my mom, so my curiosity got the better of me, and I had to ask him about it. It turns out the story was a wild one. My dad met Karen during a whirlwind week that could only be described as impulsive and passionate. They clicked immediately, and within days, my dad, caught up in the excitement of it all, proposed to her. Despite her family's strong disapproval, they decided to go ahead with the wedding. The ceremony was set to take place on a beautiful, open stretch of land by her parents' house. As guests started arriving and the final preparations were being made, my dad had a sudden moment of clarity. Standing there, looking at the decorations and the people gathering, he realized how absurd it was to marry someone he barely knew. Panic set in, and he understood he couldn't go through with it. Now my dad and his best friend both had pilot licenses, and in a moment of desperation, he decided to use this to his advantage. He called his friend and asked him to fly in and pick him up, right there in the field where the wedding was supposed to happen. The image of this cracks me up, knowing how sweet and mild-mannered my dad truly is. There he was, standing in a field, wedding guests milling around, and he's arranging for a dramatic escape. As people continued to arrive and take their seats, probably exchanging pleasantries and marveling at the setup. My dad was plotting his getaway. Sure enough, his friend landed a small plane in the field. My dad, trying to be as discreet as possible but undoubtedly causing quite a scene, made his way to the plane. He climbed in and they took off, leaving a bewildered Karen and a stunned collection of guests behind. It must have been a spectacle, watching the groom fly away just moments before the ceremony. Knowing my dad, he was probably equal parts relieved and guilty, but at that moment, he felt he had no other choice. Of course, the fallout was immediate. Karen understandably was devastated, 
The marriage was annulled almost as quickly as it had begun, and the divorce papers I found were the remnants of that brief, impulsive chapter of my dad's life. When he told me the story, he laughed at the absurdity of his younger self and the crazy decisions he made back then. I can only imagine how Karen felt, probably not finding the humor in it as my dad and I did. But in the end, it became a family legend, a story we tell with a mixture of disbelief and amusement. Story 22. It wasn't canceled, but holy cow was it bad. I was the dude of honor at my sister's wedding, which should have been a joyous occasion. But the drama started well before the big day. My parents and my sister had a massive blowout over the music and catering. In a fit of spite, my mom pulled all her funding from the wedding, taking a financial loss just to make a point. The father of the groom saved the day by writing a $2,000 check. This generous gesture allowed my sister to have her reception at a converted seminary. I got the unique experience of playing Slayer's Raining Blood and South of Heaven in a place of worship, which, under different circumstances, would have been pretty cool. On the day of the wedding, there was an uneasy truce between my mom and my sister. Everything was going relatively smoothly until it came time for pictures. My mom made a quip, something minor but enough to break the fragile ceasefire. My sister exploded, screaming at the top of her lungs, liberally using words like unpleasant and bad person. My dad, fed up with the drama, grabbed my mom's arm and declared, we're not dealing with this nonsense, and headed for the car. My brother chased after them, trying to mediate. Meanwhile, I saw my young nephew standing nearby looking confused and scared. I grabbed him and handed him off to a very stoned groomsman, figuring he'd be better off away from the chaos. With my nephew safe, I needed a moment to collect myself. I found the most isolated bathroom I could and broke down for a solid ten minutes. The stress and embarrassment of the day had finally gotten to me. Outside, my brother managed to convince my parents to stay, for the sake of my nephew's memories. My brother-in-law calmed my sister down, but not before the entire guest list, along with the pastor, had witnessed the family meltdown. It was humiliating. I felt like, for once, my family fit the Texas redneck white trash stereotype to a T. The day that should have been about love and celebration was marred by pettiness and anger. Story 23. I was a bridesmaid for a girl whose wedding was called off at 4 a.m. on the day of the ceremony. It was a roller coaster from start to finish. Just 10 days before the wedding, she caught her fiancé cheating in their own bed. When she confronted him, things turned violent. He beat her up, leaving her bruised and devastated. Despite the chaos, they somehow made up, and the wedding plans continued as scheduled. Everyone thought things were back on track until the early hours of the wedding day. At 4 a.m., he sent her a message saying, I can't do this, and the wedding was abruptly canceled. The financial fallout was massive, over 20,000 pounds down the drain. After the disaster, they went their separate ways for six months. Both of them started seeing new people, and it seemed like they had moved on. But then, to everyone's surprise, they got back together. They went ahead with the marriage and started IVF treatments. Now they've just had a baby. Story 24. I traveled from the U.S. to Morocco for my wife's cousin's wedding, which promised to be a grand event with a multi-day reception and elaborate ceremonies. The excitement was palpable and everyone was eagerly anticipating the celebration. However, just a few days before the wedding, tragedy struck. The groom's mother had a stroke and passed away. The entire mood shifted from joyous anticipation to somber mourning. The bride and groom, along with their families, were devastated. Given the circumstances, they decided to cancel the public ceremony and the multi-day reception out of respect for the deceased. Instead, they opted for a private wedding, a quiet affair that was a stark contrast to the lavish celebration that had been planned. In a bittersweet twist, the timing of the wedding turned out to be somewhat fortuitous. The groom's mother was very old and had already suffered numerous strokes. Because of the wedding, this was the first time in many years that the entire family was together in one place. Despite the grief, there was a sense of solace in knowing that they were all there to support one another and to honor her memory together. The private wedding, though not what anyone had originally envisioned, became a poignant moment of unity and love amidst the sadness. It was a reminder of the fragility of life and the importance of family. The families came together, not just to celebrate a marriage, but to mourn a loss and to be there for each other in a time of need. Story 25. I didn't know the full story until much later. But it turns out there was a lot more to this wedding than anyone realized at the time. The ceremony itself went off without a hitch. The bride looked stunning. The groom was all smiles, and everyone celebrated their union with joy. They even went on a beautiful honeymoon to another country, seemingly the perfect start to their married life. However, things took a strange turn. After they returned from their honeymoon, it came out that they had never officially gotten married. They hadn't submitted the necessary paperwork to legalize their marriage. This oversight seemed odd, but the real story was much darker. 
The bride had been having an affair with the groom's best friend for quite some time. She had used the honeymoon as a cover, but her heart was already set elsewhere. Shortly after their return, she left the groom and moved to another country to be with his best friend. The betrayal was compounded when she got pregnant and had a son with the best friend. The whole situation was a mess. The groom, a genuinely reasonable and decent guy, was blindsided by the betrayal. He thought he was starting a new chapter of his life with the woman he loved, only to have it all crumble in the most heartbreaking way. His best friend, the person he trusted the most, had been deceiving him all along. Story 26 I once attended a wedding where things took a very unexpected turn. The ceremony itself was beautiful, held in a charming church with family and friends, gathered to celebrate the couple's union. Everything seemed perfect as the couple exchanged vows and sealed their commitment with a kiss. But just as the ceremony concluded, word started spreading that there was a major problem at the reception hall. A water pipe had burst, flooding the entire venue. Panic and frustration rippled through the crowd as everyone tried to figure out what to do next. The reception, which everyone had been eagerly anticipating, was suddenly in jeopardy. The bride and groom were understandably upset, but they quickly pulled themselves together. With the help of their bridal party and some quick-thinking family members, they began calling around town to find a new venue. After what felt like an eternity but was probably just a couple of hours, they managed to secure a restaurant that was willing to let them reserve the entire place for the evening. The transition was chaotic. Guests had to be informed of the new location, transportation had to be arranged, and the restaurant needed time to prepare for the unexpected influx of people. Despite the delay and the initial stress, everyone eventually made their way to the new venue. What could have been a disaster turned into a surprisingly memorable night. The restaurant staff went above and beyond to accommodate us. They rearranged tables, set up a makeshift dance floor, and even managed to whip up a delicious impromptu menu. The informal setting created a relaxed and intimate atmosphere, and people started to enjoy the novelty of the situation. The makeshift reception, though delayed and unplanned, turned out to be a great success. The guests who had been worried and stressed let loose and had a fantastic time. The bride and groom, initially crestfallen by the turn of events, found themselves surrounded by laughter, love, and support. It was a reminder that sometimes the best memories come from the most unexpected circumstances. Story 27 I've mentioned this before, but I'm afraid I don't have much background story to it. My high school Spanish teacher, Mrs. Rodriguez, had the misfortune of being left at the altar not once, but twice. It's one of those stories that, even in the retelling, makes you wonder how someone can endure such heartbreak and still keep going. The first incident happened a few years before she became my teacher. She was engaged to a man she had been dating for several years. They seemed perfect for each other, at least from the outside. The wedding day arrived and everything was set. The guests were seated, the flowers were arranged, and Mrs. Rodriguez looked stunning in her wedding dress. But as she waited for her groom to appear, whispers started spreading through the church. The groom was nowhere to be found. Eventually, it became clear that he wasn't coming. He had left her standing at the altar, heartbroken and humiliated. She took some time to recover from that ordeal, but eventually, she met someone new. He was kind, attentive, and seemed genuinely in love with her. Despite her past experience, she decided to take another chance on love. They got engaged, and the wedding planning began again. Her friends and family were thrilled for her, hoping this time would be different. The second wedding day arrived, and once again, everything seemed perfect. But just like before, as the ceremony was about to start, her groom was nowhere to be found. This time, he left a note. He couldn't go through with it and had decided to leave town. Mrs. Rodriguez was devastated. Being left at the altar twice is a blow that most people couldn't even imagine, let alone endure. Despite these heartbreaks, Mrs. Rodriguez remained one of the most positive and kind-hearted people I've ever met. She never let her personal pain affect her professional life. As a teacher, she was always enthusiastic, patient, and encouraging. She had a way of making her students feel special and capable, even when they struggled with the language. Her resilience was truly inspiring. We never really talked about her personal life in detail, but the story of her two almost weddings became a sort of legend among the students. It was a reminder of her strength and perseverance. She never let those experiences define her, and she continued to live her life with grace and optimism. Story 28. Not exactly mid-ceremony or totally canceled, but here we go. I was engaged to my high school sweetheart, and we had planned our wedding date exactly one year after a traumatic experience that, while upsetting, had ultimately brought us closer together. We had both taken three days off work in a row, with the wedding day being the last, carefully arranged around our job schedules. Just an hour before we were supposed to head to the ceremony, we received an unexpected call. The person who was to perform our ceremony had to rush to the hospital because her ex-husband was on his deathbed, succumbing to cancer. It was a shocking and heart-wrenching situation, 
and while I initially felt upset, I quickly realized how selfish my feelings were given the gravity of her situation. The next day, we decided to arrange a small intimate ceremony. We gathered our closest loved ones, his parents, our best friend and his family, and my dad. Unfortunately, my mom had not spoken to me for several months, and my dad refused to attend because he and my mom had a date planned. It stung, but we were determined to make our day special regardless. My husband took a break from work, ran home to change, and met us at the park by the river near our house. It was a serene and beautiful setting. The ceremony was small, private, and incredibly meaningful. Despite the setbacks and the absence of some family members, it turned out to be a perfect day for us. Story 29. The music played, and we made our march up the path, full of anticipation and excitement. The officiant took the microphone and began the opening of the ceremony, setting the stage for what was supposed to be our perfect outdoor wedding. But then, nature had other plans. It started to rain. At first, it was just a few drops, but within moments, it turned into a full-blown torrential downpour. Thunder rumbled and lightning flashed across the sky. The guests scrambled for cover, and the beautifully decorated setting quickly became a soggy mess. We had planned for everything except this. Our outdoor wedding was being washed away right before our eyes. But rather than let the storm ruin our special day, we decided to adapt. With the rain coming down in sheets, we grabbed whatever we could carry and moved the entire ceremony indoors. Jammed into the living room of our house, surrounded by our closest family and friends, we continued the ceremony. It was cramped and a bit chaotic, with people standing in every available space, but it was also intimate and incredibly heartfelt. The officiate, drenched but undeterred, carried on with the ceremony. As we stood there, exchanging vows in the middle of our living room, the rain pounding on the roof, it felt oddly perfect. The storm outside made the warmth and love inside even more palpable. Everyone was laughing, smiling, and making the best of the unexpected turn of events. That was 24 years ago. Looking back, the torrential downpour that forced us to relocate our wedding turned out to be a blessing in disguise. It made our day unique and memorable in ways we never could have planned. Instead of the picture-perfect outdoor ceremony we envisioned, we got something even better. A story that has become a cherished part of our history together. Story 30. My buddy was all set to marry his girlfriend, and the excitement was building up as the big day approached. As part of the usual pre-wedding festivities, we threw him a bachelor party, and to make it memorable, a stripper was hired. She was a bit older, but she was friendly and added a fun vibe to the party. The party was in a hotel room, and she brought along a mini inflatable pool, which she set up right in the middle of the room. With music playing and everyone clapping along, the atmosphere was electric. The stripper and my buddy ended up sitting together in the pool, laughing and having what seemed like an amazing time. As the night went on, most of us left the hotel room, assuming my buddy would catch up with us later. However, what happened next changed everything. I got word later that he had stayed behind with the stripper, and they ended up having intercourse. Shortly after that night, the wedding was called off. The news spread quickly among our group of friends, and everyone was in shock. The relationship between my buddy and his girlfriend, which had seemed so solid, was now in tatters. The betrayal and the poor decision made in a moment of weakness had far-reaching consequences. The bachelor party, which was supposed to be a night of harmless fun, turned into the catalyst for heartbreak and the end of an engagement. It was a stark reminder of how quickly things can spiral out of control and the lasting impact of a single night's actions.